Good afternoon and welcome to this webinar, Your Dirty Process Water is Increasing Your Total Operating Cost. This event, brought to you by Process Cooling, is sponsored by Vortisand. I'm your moderator, Linda Becker, Hello. the Associate Publisher and Editor for Process Cooling, and thanks for joining us. Today's presenter is Mike Ditton, a Vortisand Product Specialist at Avoqua. Mike has more than 15 years of experience in the resource recovery, wastewater, and specialty chemi chemical is industries. He also has an MS in Innovation Management and a BS in Chemical Engineering. Don't forget to submit your questions, and later during the program, Michael will address as many as he can. Today's event is being recorded, and it will be archived on Process Cooling's website. And now, without further ado, I'm excited to turn it over to today's presenter, Mike Ditton. Thank you, Linda. Good morning, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, welcome. Today, we'll be talking today about fine filtration and connecting that to the proper filtration methods. We'll talk about the drivers for fine filtration in both process cooling and high purity applications. I'll be talking many times about why filtration is important to you. We'll talk about what filtration, fine filtration is. We'll review the available water technologies on the market today. Um, a number of different solutions are out there. How can you better choose what's best for you? We'll understand the difference between suspended solids and particle size distribution and how they both impact your process. And then we'll go into maximizing your return on investment uh, using a high efficiency submicron filtration. And then we'll finish up going into some case studies uh, looking at where high efficiency submicron filtration has been installed. Now, first to start off the presentation, we would love to turn it over to the audience, have this little bit more of a, a di dynamic dialogue here. Love to ask you guys, you know, why, why filtration is important to you, but also where and what industries would you classify your business? So right now, if you guys can see the, the poll question on your screen, if you could start making your votes, and we can start looking at where that is, where the majority is coming from. So obviously, there's, these are a number of different Industries, uh, Vortisand uh, team has had over 2,500 2, installations worldwide. We've done a number of these different types of filtration installations um, in food and beverage, oil and gas, whatever that may be. So we, we take time and effort to customize and provide a solution for you. So, so far we're looking like the majority of installations or the majority of industries here um, are in food and beverage, about 30% of you are uh, in food and beverage, uh, some are consulting engineering, and, and other. So it sounds like we, uh, we have some other industries that are not represented here. And this is what the, uh, the results would look like. Now, you may be thinking, what is fine filtration? Now, why are we talking about that today? Uh, some of the key drivers that we're seeing with fine filtration is cooling efficiencies. A number of different facilities out there are concerned about the operating costs uh, associated with, with cooling, HVACs, uh, heating loops, cooling loops, whatever that may be, um, reducing the efficiency or reducing the energy associated with, with, with cooling and heating is, is paramount. And um, within, within that industry, we're seeing data centers and semiconductor fields um, increasing in, in interest. And with that, as more and more high-tech, high-quality products are on the rise, that will demand an increase in, in cooling efficiencies as well. So we're definitely seeing that as a trend. Um, but also, we're seeing water reuse and green initiatives come into play. Um, as more industries are starting to uh, inter interact with the amount of water and scarcity uh, throughout the, this planet of water, uh, making sure that we have uh, enough water is, is quite important. So uh, we're trying to understand how we can reduce water consumption. And then also green initiatives. Uh, a number of the facilities we've been involved with um, have actually been able to achieve LEED certification uh, by utilizing an energy efficient and water reuse pr uh, or, or low water consumption technology. Maintenance and operation costs. Um, as you operate your cooling tower, your chiller, your, your <clears throat> as well as other technologies, you're seeing more and more emphasis on reduction of chemicals, biocides uh, that uh, can, be more, can be focused on more on ultraviolet technologies, UV. We're seeing that as definitely becoming more of a, more of a trend. And lastly, from a human health perspective, um, Legionella risk assessment programs. Working with your chemical provider uh, can really provide you a good estimate and, and program on that, that risk assessment. 
and really life cycle analysis of all the different technologies. It's not just a capital investment, it's also how it interacts with operating costs, labor, et cetera. So I'm, I'm talking about fine filtration, fine particles. What does that mean? Now, we're talking, here. This, this illustration here shows you where fine particle filtration exists in the green box here. And this is really a chart showing different size components from atomic radii to, uh, to salts to viruses all the way up to the visible spectrum of beach sand and activated carbon and, and hairs. So your, your bottom axis is uh, on the micron scale from 0 0.0001 microns all the way up to 1,000 microns or one millimeter. Today we're going to be focusing on fine filtration. So we're going to be filtering out particles that are not visible with the human eye versus small atomic radii that you would traditionally use reverse osmosis or nanofiltration um, versus viruses in the ultrafiltration sector. Um, we're going to be focusing on the 1 to 10 micron range today. Now, it's important to understand the difference between TSS and particle size, total suspended solids. Now, a number of you out there probably know the TSS or the turbidity even of your, of your water flow. Um, and that's important, definitely. But the other part of the equation is particle size. Now, you can see this illustration here. On the left, you have a jar of, of water with one ppm of solids in it, represented by one particle that's three millimeters in size. So you have one ppm of, of solids. Is that equal one ppm of 256 billion particles at two micron in size? You would, you would it, no, it is not. It's one ppm in TSS, but it's not equal in terms of how the particles are, are represented in, in size. Dispersants in some applications are used to break up particles, to keep them in suspension so they're able to be filtered out. But when you, when you use a dispersant, you're converting that small chip scale or whatever that may be from, from your cooling tower, process, whatever, uh, you're converting that into small, small particles, much more difficult to remove with a filtration device. Now, particle size, you have those 256 billion particles. Now, they're all, the, they're all not the same size. There's a distribution of particle sizes. Um, it's, it's important not only to understand the TSS, but understand the particle size distribution. Uh, we use, the industry uses something called laser particle count analysis that can better quantify your water quality to a higher level or resolution to identify those small particles. Um, this is a, an example of a laser particle count analysis showing your particle size, which is, can be represented by the vertical axis, uh, UM or micron from less than one all the way up to uh, 100. And then on the bar, the black bars that go horizontally are representing the, the count of those particles at different sizes. So in this example, over 95% of the particles are, between, are less than five microns in size. Very important information to know when you are looking at the, quat, the quality of your, of your water sample. You need to understand um, not only the TSS, but also what the particles are, are being represented at. Now, why are, we, why are these fine particles so um, of interest? Fine particles less than 10 microns are one of the largest contributors to fouling. This is the very important part of, of, of knowing what type of filtration technology you need. Those fine particles less than 10 micron are the major source of solids and nutrient sources for bacteria such as Legionella and other microorganisms. As, as those particles keep feeding that bacteria, you're going to start developing biofilms. And these biofilms can accumulate over time on heat transfer surfaces, your chiller tubes, your heat exchanger surfaces, et cetera. And over time, those biofilms will reduce the conductivity on those heat transfer surfaces, leading to heat transfer loss. Over time, that can cause significant amount of, of, of energy uh, and inefficiency. Um, in order to maintain your cooling tower at a certain temperature, you will need to yet continually add more and more energy to maintain your certain delta, uh, delta T. So decreasing energy efficiency levels uh, are definitely uh, a huge part of, of fouling. 
And then over time, if you have more and more particle growth, biofilms that can potentially plug up your, your HVAC units or process equipment uh, to ultimately plug, damage, corrode, uh, ultimately leading to equipment misfunction, reinvestment, large capital costs, and operating costs. So, not just, so just because your process water looks clear doesn't mean it's clean. And this is true for all the different applications and in industries, from HVAC, cooling, to food and beverage, to wastewater treatment, data centers, et cetera. Wherever you're using water, either for cooling or heating, or even your product, you want to make sure that your water is clean. And when we say clean, not just visibly, but clean all the way down to the micron level. And it's important to understand what's involved in your water. So let's, let's go into detail a little bit further on both heat transfer efficiency up, uh, examples as well as process related. And it's important to understand uh, how fouling, uh, cleaning, maintenance, chemical usage, and the equipment failure can affect both of these types of applications. From a heat transfer perspective, uh, we, it's, it's important to understand how fouling leads to losses in heat transfer. Now, in your heat transfer applications, your, your, your heat exchangers, your cooling towers, your, your chiller loops, you're all using copper. Copper, you want to basically transfer heat. So you want to use a material that's very good in conductivity, thermal conductivity. And if you compare copper's thermal conductivity to that of biofilm, you see a drastic reduction in your thermal conductivity. That thermal conductivity will, uh, cr because of those, those biofilm layering, will reduce your heat transfer within your heat transfer surfaces, which will then, over time, uh, lead to f f basically losses of, of energy. And as you can see here on the right, the chart on the right, the fouling factors chart, as your fouling factor increases, you can see some data that actually show uh, the increases in energy uh, that would be, uh, be caused. So if you want to keep your, your chillers or, or cooling towers or hot um, loops at the maintaining the same delta T, you're going to need to continually add more and more energy to counteract that, that biofilm growth. So it's important to, to understand uh, how fouling leads to, to heat loss, heat transfer loss. And here's just an extreme example of some biofilm growth uh, in heat exchanger applications. Now, this is an example. You have two images here on your screen. The left uh, image shows a cooling tower that was operated with a filtration device called a centrifugal separator. Uh, with, so that's without fine filtration. This is an extreme example, um, but that that, fill, that, that cooling tower was operating at very high TSS levels. And once fine filtration was installed, after 60 days of, of, of operation, you can see a dramatic improvement in the water clarity here, which is, which is one definite aspect of un, improve, understanding the improvement of your, of your filter technology. Now, if we go a, a, step lo, a step greater here and understand not just the visual and not just from a TSS perspective, but from a particle size perspective, and you, we look at the, the tables below here, you actually can see how that particle size compares. Uh, on the left here, uh, the, the, the water that was not filtered with fine filtration, over 95, over, over 90 percent of the, the particles are below five microns in size. And if you look at the total count, total particles in that water, you're looking at almost 720,000 particles per cubic centimeter. Once fine filtration was installed, after six days of operation, that total count dropped from 720,000 all the way down to almost 7,000 counts per cubic centimeter, a drastic improvement uh, by removing those small uh, five micron and less particles. Very important to understand the data to, uh, to understand your water quality. Not only is this improvement in clarity and in quality, but we're also uh, able to now remove the, the maintenance effect, the maintenance associated with having to clean out that, that basin of that cooling tower. You can see here it's been uh, the TSS and the settling in the basin got so bad that they were able to have to uh, shovel out that, uh, that basin, uh, leading to high labor, high operating costs, 
you know, having to shut down that cooling tower to get the material out, not to mention uh, the exposure to human health and, and exposure to potential Legionella. So now let's switch gears a bit from HVAC and cooling to more of the process efficiencies. So here's just a very general basic description or illustration of a typical uh, manufacturing process from food and beverage to oil and gas to, uh, to a number of different industries. But for your application, you're going to require water for some, some aspect of it. And that water, uh, you're sourcing that water from, from the city. The city is providing you that water at some cost or at some quality, which may not be uh, up to your standards. It could be well water. It could be surface water. It could be a number of different sources. But whatever your process requirements are, would be required, uh, you're going to have to pre-treat that in somehow uh, through, through filtration, through ion exchange, through reverse osmosis, ultrafiltration. There's a number of different pre-treatment uh, components to uh, making the water uh, as, as high quality as you may need. Uh, then, and then in your process, you may be using water, high purity water, for your product. Maybe it's going into your, your beverage or, or, or some other type of application that water is part of your product. You want to make sure that that water quality is as high quality as possible. Uh, remove pollutants that may be from, from the well, from the city. Um, and then after you've been utilizing that, that water, making sure that that, way that water is then then be treated uh, wastewater has been treated to make sure you're abiding by your city discharge limit um, for TSS, for turbidity, or, or even, uh, even discharging to a, a lake or stream or a river. There's a number of different regulations associated with that. So the permit might dictate a certain level of, of, of component. And then as I spoke earlier, a number of industries are utilizing water uh, more efficiently in their process and reusing that water. So as you reuse water and recycle that, com com contaminants and pollutants will, will con concentrate and build up over time. And you want to make sure that fine particulates are removed uh, prior to reuse. Fine filtration increases process manufacturing efficiencies. Now again, as I spoke earlier about water reuse, usually TSS load of, of reclaimed water is quite important to make sure you're, you're reducing. Um, fine filtration can remove those fine particles that build up and recycled over time. Um, now, again, if you're focusing on high purity applications, you might utilize reverse osmosis, RO, or, or ultrafiltration, UF. A number of different technologies are out on the market to provide you high purity water. Now, if you're using these technologies, it's very important to pre-treat that water stream ahead of time to reduce membrane fouling. And a great way to determine the level of fouling that could happen on your membrane is to use something called the silt density index, SDI. And that can be used as a great met metric for measuring fouling on membranes. And typically, an SDI above three will cause many different uh, negative effects on your, your membrane. As, as a number of you probably understand, uh, you want to get your, your waters as clear as or as clean as possible ahead of your RO. If not, you could have increases of energy costs due to fouling or flow reduction on your membranes. You could have increased costs on, on uh, cartridge replacements. Those cartridges quite, can be quite expensive, as well as the labor and downtime associated with changing them out. And then also during, during the, the cleaning pr process, or the CIP, clean in place, um, that will also require some type of shutdown and or uh, additional chemicals and costs associated with that, with that frequency. So fine filtration can reduce that SDI, and we've been working with a number of installations that can show uh, SDI reductions in both the desalination market as well as the potable uh, water market, and we would love to share that with you at some point. And then lastly, if you're focusing on water that's being part of your product or your process, uh, fine filtration will need to be will allow you to remove uh, fine particulates that can cause fouling corrosion on uh, nozzles, pumps, mechanical seals, a number of different components that actually will touch your, your product. So from an operational perspective, that's, that's quite important as well. Now let's, let's use the understanding of, why fine of, of the existence of fine particulates 
as well as why farm particulates are so important uh, to be removed from your process. Using that knowledge, now let's look at how you can choose the right filter for your application. Now there's a number of different filtration methods and technologies or solutions out on the market today from high efficiency filtration systems, screen filters, uh, such as you know large screens that can take or uh, that can take you know down to uh, maybe 100 microns, um, but these need to be cleaned at certain frequencies, requiring either labor, you know, mechanics having to shut down a process, clean those screens out, or maybe you could select an automatic screen filter. Multimedia filters are also very popular on the market today. Uh, but they're quite, uh, they're quite large in footprint. You know, the, the, for the volume associated with your flow, this can cause a significant amount of uh, footprint associated with those filtration systems. They also require high flow rates, uh, potentially causing uh, maybe some channeling um, or, or other negative aspects of multimedia. Bag and cartridge filters are, are another great sol uh, solution for, for filtering down to that one micron level. But again, there's a cost associated with that. Yes, it's a low capital cost, but the amount of filters required to maintain your performance, it, you could cause a tremendous amount of operational and, and, and for change up frequencies. Membranes, you know, that's another solution on the market, but that's focusing more on dissolved um, materials that require a trem tremendous amount of capital investment. So it might be a little bit over-engineered for a cooling tower or another type of low, or I should say high purity application. And then centrifugal separators. Uh, another, another great technology if you're, if you're having focusing on larger particles. Uh, this, this technology requires a significant amount of uh, flow or pumping requirements, high horsepower pumps that use high flow to create a centrifugal force to separate out particles based upon density. So you need to understand the differences between these different technologies for you to properly select uh, a filter for your, not only your application from a water quality perspective, but also what your facility uh, dictates. Now let's look at uh, the difference uh, between some of these technologies. Uh, to start things off, uh, another, another polling question to understand more about your uh, industry and your usage of different filtration methods. If you guys don't mind uh, t voting on what filtration methods you're, you're currently using. Okay, so results are coming in here. So it looks like it looks like the, <clears throat> the screen filters are are probably the most significant uh, used filters uh, in according to this audience right now. About 21% of you guys are using screen filters. Then uh, I would say bag and cartridge filters. So this is a this is a great understanding of of who we're talking to today. Now, when you're choosing a filter technology, it's important to understand the differences. Uh, as an example, if you're using a centrifugal separator, you should really understand the difference between total suspended solids, TSS, and particle size. If a centrifugal filter is removing 90% uh, of, your, of, your, uh, of your solids by weight, that may sound incredible, but in actuality, you're only removing the large, heavy particles. You may start off with a 10 ppm solid uh, water, and then removing 90% by weight gives you 1 ppm. So yes, you're removing those heavy particles, yet you're still remaining those uh, high quantity of small particles. And this, this uh, table below can show you that the 95% of the particles in size uh, are less than five microns. And the majority of the mass, on their hand, is large particles. So when, you need, when you're removing by mass, uh, it's a different removal technique than removing by, part, by small fine particulates, which is a very important part of understanding what technology to utilize. Now let's go into some more depth and explain why or an example of fine filtration technology utilizing high efficiency submicron. Now if you compare high efficiency submicron filtration to traditional 
multimedia or just traditional sand, legacy sand filters, it's, it's quite different, and you'll, you'll, you'll see in a second. You'll have, on the left-hand side here, you have an example of a dead end filtration, vertical flow coming down perpendicularly to the media bed. Over time, or very quickly, I should say, you will develop a cake on the top of that media layer, acting almost as an additional uh, layer of filtration. But over time, that can cause significant pressures. Your, your, delta, your delta P or delta pressure over the course of, over, the, over that media bed will go quite high, having to have rat constant backwashes at very high flow rates and water consumptions. If you look at this comparatively to cross-flow high, high efficiency filtration, you can see some very uh, interesting differences. Here you have the combination of, of tangential or cross-flow with micro sand media. And the combination of those two allow fine filtration to occur at high velocities. The micro sand that we use is 0.15 millimeters in diameter, uh, combined with Vortisan's VortiJet injector technology. This takes a vertical flow into the top of the bed and is able to translate that vertical flow into a horizontal sweeping effect, allowing larger particles to be scoured and be brought into suspension, holding those larger particles in suspension, allowing a fresh open media bed to absorb and trap smaller and smaller particles. The media bed, which we call Strata HDX Media, is very uh, small in, in thick in depth, which, which is a, a reduction in size of the filter, but it also reduces the amount of backwash water required to, to backwash the filter. We remove those fine particulates out of the media bed as well as those large particles that are in suspension. We remove that from the, or we backwash that from the filter. We see typically 80% reduction in backwash um, uh, flows, um, as well as the size of the filter we're able to drastically reduce comparatively to other multimedia filters. Now we're gonna go into some of the case studies, the number of installations that this high efficiency micro sand filtration has been installed out. Firstly, let's look at a medical center, a large hospital that installed a large central utility plant. They had four 1,000 ton cooling towers, each at a circulation rate of 3,000 GPMs. Uh, four Vorsan Classic filters were installed back in 2015. And really the challenge here was that uh, the majority or 95% of the TSS in the water uh, was less than five microns. It, it indicated that they needed uh, fine filtration. Currently they were using uh, centrifugal filters. And what happened was that we installed four different fine filtration or vortisan filters on each, one filter per each cooling tower, as you can see here. And then we installed it on the side stream. And this is important to note, as side stream filtration is becoming more and more of the norm deal in dealing with uh, filtration technologies. Why side stream filltration? Um, it's in, it enables you to reduce the filter size and, 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 and more specifically the, the cost associated with that, that filtration technology, that capital investment. So here's a cooling tower, um, as this illustration shows with a full flow or recirculation flow of 3,000 GPM. And you can see just to the bottom right of the cooling tower, you have this pump that then pumps a small side stream through a fine filtration filter. In this case, we uh, designed a 5% side stream flow calculating to be 150 GPM versus the full circulation flow of 3,000 GPM. And typical industry uh, rules of thumb is that anywhere between 3 to 10 percent of that recirculation flow can allow you to properly remove all those small particulates over the course um, of a number of, of, of weeks or, or months. And this is different, different. so you're not, you're not one pass filtering. You're not taking that full 3,000 GPM and running it through the filter constantly. You're taking a small slipstream and over the course of many weeks or months you can achieve that removal rate of, of removing uh, those small particulates less than five microns. 
This allows you to, re so side stream removal allows you to reduce your filter size, your pump size, so now your energy requirements are drastically lower, and, and, the, and the water consumption. How much water you need for backwashing also is drastically improved. So utilizing or installing a side stream filtration in this medical center's cooling tower, uh, they were able to achieve drastic uh, reductions in particle counts. They saw after just 60 days of running uh, the Vortisand uh, filter, they were able to achieve 90% removal of particles less than 5 microns. And you can see here the image of the four cooling towers at a panoramic view of each cooling tower having its own 150 GPM uh, side stream filtration. Not only is the Vortisand high efficiency submicron filter used in HVAC or cooling or heating applications, we've also been able to improve uh, pretreatment water qualities for a well water RO pretreatment. Uh, this is a case study or this is an installation uh, that was done at a pulp and paper facility where uh, back in 2014 uh, we installed a Vortisan H2F 300 uh, uh, back in 2014, uh, removing large quantities of TSS uh, for the pulp and paper mill to operate more efficiently. Um, and what we saw was about 1.5 million particles were removed, or 1.5 million particles at the inlet, um, and then after a 99% removal, uh, they saw particles drop to about 12,000 uh, particles. So uh, that were five microns in, or less. So drastic improvement for the pulp and paper mill um, for a pre-RO application. Additionally, we also see some great results in the oil and gas industry, specifically produced water. Uh, this is a uh, installation uh, that back in 2011 and 2015, eight different Vortisand 36-inch uh, filters were installed, each at a uh, 600 GPM capacity. The reason uh, the produced water would, was not able to be re-injected into uh, the, the environment. They wanted to remove fine part part particles uh, to prevent fouling, um, so they installed the, the H2F3. Uh, now, I've talked to you today about how fine filtration is important for HVAC talked about how it's important for different process applications, but it also should be noted what the limitations of fine filtration high efficiency uh, is. Uh, HVAC cooling, your TSS and your turbidity levels are much different than your process applications. It's important to understand the differences. Uh, for the Vortisand fine filtration high efficiency, uh, in terms of TSS, BOD, TOC, there's a number of different uh, boundary limits or, or basically peak loads associated with each of these parameters. Uh, in terms of TSS, we're, we normally see influent waters, you know, anywhere up to 20 mil milligrams per liter uh, and really a maximum of, of up to 100 milligrams per liter. BOD, uh, we typically like to see below 20, uh, 20 to 30 milligrams per liter and so forth. But please, let, you know, if you have an application that falls a little bit outside of these results, we would be very um, interested in, in talking to you further about what your process application uh, looks like. And lastly, having fine filtration utilizing a, a Vortisand filter isn't, isn't the only solution here. This is not going to solve all of your problems. This is not going to remove uh, it's not going to remove Legionella, it's going to assist in reducing nutrients for that Legionella to grow. So it's important to understand that submicron fine filtration is just one component of, the over, of your overall solution for your process needs. We still like to see uh, a larger screening technology uh, prior to Vortisand's fine filtration. And there's also post-filter, post you also could utilize, uh, instead of biocides or other types of chemical treatment, you could also utilize UV. So these are a number of different technologies that are developing or that are increasing in popularity that can work as a total solution to improve your water quality at your process and facility. In summary, I hope it's been clear that clear water does not equal clean water. It, you understand your, your water quality more than anyone, uh, but 
not only is TSS and turbidity important, it's also important to understand the particle size of your, of your, of your solids. And removal by weight is not the same thing as removal by particle. Um, by removing by weight, you're just going to be removing those heavy, large particles, um, and that's not really a, a, an efficient filtration method. It's only one part of the equation. You need to get down to that submicron level, and that's where uh, high-efficiency submicron filtration really has the biggest value for you and your facility. And, you know, if you're not filtering uh, in, in, your, in your cooling tower or in your process, you know, that can become very costly over time, and a number of side effects can ripple up to cause many, many uh, outside issues. An efficient process can help improve your organization's bottom line, and I hope fine filtration uh, is definitely of, of interest to you. Okay.